guys, what's up? Welcome to Starving Artist Courses, your all-in-one online music resource. Um, I'm Dean Sinclair, and today we are going to go over Clocks by Coldplay. Um, this song is from 2002, and I'm only 25 years old. So this song has been, like, in my life, I feel, for, like, ever. It's always been there. It's a song that you've always heard on the radio, whether you're on a rock station or a pop station, what have you. You probably know this song. Um, the drummer on this song is Will Champion, and his it's kind of a cool story because he's never really played in a band before joining Coldplay. He's never really played drums before. So it's really unique, his approach to playing the drum set on this song, I think, um, because it's not a typical one, two, three, four. Most rock grooves, you know, things that we've learned in the past, sound like this. The main part of the song is all based around a piano riff. Piano riff, piano riff, piano, piano riff, piano riff, piano, piano riff, right? So every p piano, you're going to have a snare drum hit. So that translates to one, the and of two, and count four. Most rock songs are just two, four. So this is like a partial bossa nova almost with like the one, the and of two, and count four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. What is similar to previous rock grooves we learned is everything is still very much eighth note based at this point. Your hi-hat, your ride, everything your right hand is doing is going to be one and two and three and four and for the entire song. The only time you're not doing that is when you're resting. Beyond that, it's all eighth notes. There's also no fills, no crazy fills you need to learn. In a way, the drum part itself is one fill almost. Also, getting back to that snare drum part we looked at, the one and two and three and four and. The notes in between are going to be played on your kick drum. So when we take the one, the and, the and of two, and count four on the snare, every note that is not on the snare drum is going to be on the bass drum with our ride cymbal or our hi-hat staying consistent, steady eighth notes over top. So if you were to look at this song, you know, in the notation here, you'll see it bounces up and down between the snare and the kick drum. But still, there's going to be a drum on every eighth note, just the same way there's going to be a cymbal on every eighth note. So... The beginning of the song, we'll call it like instrumental intro, and the chorus of the song. I don't really feel okay calling it a chorus because it's pretty much the same as the verse, just some lyrical and melodic changes in the vocals. Um, that is all going to be played on the ride cymbal. It adds this atmosphere on it, you know, ride it. It breathes a bit as opposed to a hi-hat, more tight, which is why in the verses, when there is that more consistent verse, vocal, melody, a tighter, more subdued, not as uh, breathy, open sound. So all verses are going to be on the hi-hat. All choruses are going to be on the ride cymbal. There's got to be the point where we transition from verse to chorus, or chorus to verse. So here's how we're going to play the chorus, or intro, into the verse where the vocals begin.
So one thing also that uh, Will Champion does uh, occasionally, you'll hear it in the recording, is on the count four from going from instrumental chorus into the verse, he'll give a little bit of a kind of crash on the ride cymbal, it seems, on count four before hitting the crash itself on count one into the verse. So we're going da do do da do do bang one and then we're back over here on the hi-hat. Again, a lot of younger players, I see this a lot, when it's time to hit the crash cymbal, they think one, one and two and three and four and no. As you'll see in the notation here, the crash itself is the count one of your measure and the whole phrase in total. So count one, crash, the and of one, we move back to the hi-hat. So let's break down this drum part um, a little bit here. And again, so once we learn this part, the only real differences that we have in the entire song are just, am I playing it on the hi-hat or am I playing it on the ride cymbal? Am I gonna be throwing some crashes in? Everything else, the mechanics of your left hand and your right foot, gonna be the same. Your left foot too, because it's gonna be just holding the hi-hat down the whole time. Just quick, this is just a me thing, personal preference. Um, but since this song doesn't open the hi-hat at all, there's no reason to do anything like that. I just like to keep my foot holding the hi-hat down. It just seems like less potential for air <laughs> moving forward. So if you're not playing the hi-hat like this song, there's no reason to open it, just keep it closed, okay? So this groove, all eighth notes on the right hand. Whether we're on the ride cymbal or the hi-hat, it is all eighth notes. So we have one, the end of two, and count four on the snare. So this is what it sounds like with just the snare and the hi-hat. So now we're going to take a look here at just the left hand and the right foot, so just the snare drum and the bass drum together. So now you might find this beneficial, you might not, but we're just gonna isolate the snare drum out of the groove right now. So we're just gonna play the part if it's only hi-hat and bass drum now. All right, so now we have all the different combinations of the groove taken care of here. So we're gonna put it all together now. Um, we're gonna play it at two different tempos on two different cymbals here. So we're gonna do 100 beats per minute into 130 beats per minute, which is where the song roughly sits. And then 
we are going to play it on hi-hat, as you'll hear it in like the verse of the songs, and then you'll hear it on the ride cymbal, where you'll hear it in the choruses, um, the intro and the outro, and the bridge also. Okay, so now we need to get back into the chorus instrumental part. So what we do there, it's pretty straightforward. Um, there's no real count four accent going on on the hi-hat. Also, the hi-hat doesn't open at all in this entire song. It stays shut, crisp the whole time. So once we have our verse concludes, once our verse is over, to go back in the instrumental, all we do is one and two and three and four and one. We hit the crash cymbal, and then it's the opposite scenario. In, um, instead of going crash count one, hi-hat, and a one, we're going crash count one, ride cymbal, and of one. And that keeps on going out that entire time. So there is a bridge in this song also towards the end. Um, affects all you uh, tonal guys out there. Us, we just keep this groove going the same way, okay? We're still just hanging out on the ride cymbal here. So when if you hear some different chords, drummers, just keep on holding your groove, keep on doing your job here, okay? Also, there is, after the bridge, a moment of pause, similar to the intro and the and the outro, okay? So just conclude your parts as is one and two and three and four and one. We hit a big crash on count one with the snare drum. And just wait a little bit. You'll feel it when it's time to come in, okay? Counting to four is always gonna be your best friend here. Everything is in phrases of four. So near the end, the outro repeats a little bit, it feels like. So what, uh, what Champion does is he really starts accenting our one and of two and four snare hits with a crash cymbal, okay? If you have multiple crash cymbals, multiple cymbals, go for it in the recording. It just sounds like he's using one, so I'm just gonna use one. And it's kinda cool because this is still that era of rock pop recording where there is actual drum set in it. And so you can hear inconsistencies of the crash in it. And it's cool because I was listening to this part thinking about how I wanted to teach it, like, or is he, you know, using multiple symbols? And, you know, sometimes one crash doesn't, one hit doesn't seem as loud as the other one because if you're hitting the symbol a lot, it's, you know, going up and down. So just to kind of depending on how you're hitting it, it sounds very real. And so that's one thing also I appreciate about this uh, recording in general. So all we're doing here to accent the snare drum is hitting the crash. So you can kind of think about it every time you hit the snare drum, hit the crash cymbal too. Every time you're hitting the bass drum, you're hitting the ride cymbal. Now, he does change up the rhythm slightly here in this part. So I'm gonna show you what that is like with the, uh, the ride and the crash, everything put together, and then we're gonna break it down just looking at exactly what our snare and our bass drum, what our left hand and our right foot are doing.
Also, I've been mentioning every now and then a Bossa Nova in here. Um, so let's just kind of take a look at what that groove is. It doesn't really pertain to, you don't need to learn this. You don't need to know this to play this song. But this song does act as a, almost a good transition over into what learning uh, a Latin groove like that may be. So this is almost like a weird hybrid rock Latin-esque groove here. So at least the first portion of a bossa nova has the same accent pattern or clave pattern as uh, clocks does, that one and two and three and four. Now the rest of a bossa nova will go on to a one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and, where this is just one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. So let's take a look at uh, just what a bossa nova is, just for fun, and then also just Again, really um, listening to that clave accent pattern to really get that internalized because, again, that is the drum part for this song. All right, guys, so if you made it this far, congratulations. You've played Clocks by Coldplay on the drums, um, originally recorded and the parts written by Will Champion. Um, your homework, again, just work on your eighth notes. is super important for this one. This whole song is eighth notes. There's not a single 16th note in there. It is all one and two and three and four and. So really practice that on the hi-hat, the ride cymbal, however you see fit at the different tempos marked. 130 is the actual BPM for this song, roughly, but when we play it at 100, it's actually kind of tricky. So this is just a good exercise in general to really focus on our timing and our metronome, also, especially in a context where each note is an eighth note. So if you're just doing a click to a core note, your subdivisions of eighth notes is super important for this. And this is a really good way to tell how your timing holds up. Because I just, me even recording on the 100 BPMs today, I was like, ooh, we're a little rusty here. We gotta look at that. So listen to this song a lot. Listen to the subtleties and think about why the drummer plays hi hats in certain parts, why he plays the ride cymbal. When he does the crashes, it all makes sense. And even though this is not your typical one and two and three and four and rock groove in terms of two, four, backbeat, count one on bass drum, because this song starts snare count one. That's unique in the rock pop context. Most songs on the radio don't do that. So listen to this song. Think about how it's similar in structure but also different in terms of the parts actually played and how the drum part complements the rest of the song. Listen to how the bass player is playing. He's chugging along those eighth notes too. You're playing eighth notes. That piano riff is all eighth notes, but the melody and how the snare drum and kick complement it, that's what makes this song unique in particular, okay? If you guys liked what you saw, be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel here. There you can find all of our videos of all of our instructors teaching lessons just like this. Additionally, you can go to our website, www.starvingartistcourses.com slash memberships for one-on-one -on -one lessons as well, where we do online virtual lessons. So if you needed to do this song with a little bit more personalization, you can have a lesson with me or one of our other instructors as well. There, you can also find links to all of our social media accounts in addition to a PDF download of a free gift called Finding Time for Music and it details ways for you to add music and incorporate music into your day-to-day -day hectic lives. Once again, I'm Dean Sinclair with Starving Artist Courses. Thanks again for watching, guys. And again, be sure to like and subscribe for more videos. Thank you, and uh, keep on rocking.